Special Inspectorate for Correctional Services says the recently announced reduction of sentences is not a long-term solution for overcrowding. It says instead a multi-pronged approach is needed as experience has shown that significant numbers of those who were released in the past found themselves back behind bars a bit later. President Cyril Ramaphosa made the announcement this uh, Monday on Reconciliation Day. To discuss this further from our Pretoria studios, we're now joined by Justice Johan van der Westhuizen. He's the inspecting judge at the Judicial Inspectorate for Correctional Services. Justice, thank you so much for being our guest here on Morning Live. Thank you. Good morning. There's been a lot of reaction from all sectors to the announcement, and although you have welcomed it, there's one thing you're concerned about is a proper approach to addressing overcrowding. What do you think? What are your views on how we should address uh, overcrowding at the correctional uh, service centres? Yeah, the overcrowding is not an easy thing to address. Let me first say that we do welcome this remission because apart from the element of mercy and, uh, and uh, good messages over the festive season and of course the risks that it involved, apart from that it will um, relieve temporarily the overcrowding. It will make the, make the lives of prison officials easier for a short while. However, it is not a long-term solution. Um, we need a multi-pronged approach, starting with, of course, our society. Uh, poverty, um, the violence which seems to be ingrained in our DNA, lack of morality, then move on to arrest procedures and especially the granting of bail. Uh, magistrates have a very difficult decision to take whether to grant bail or not because they lot of, need a lot of information from the prosecution, from the defense, which is not always forthcoming. When bail is granted, people often cannot afford it or their families do not want to make the money available for a variety of reasons. When it comes to sentencing, uh, courts should perhaps have a more creative approach but not forget the requirement of equality before the law. Mm. And then when it comes to parole at the end, we hear that some communities refuse to accept so-called criminals or criminals back into their ranks after serving long sentences and administratively there are also very long delays with the granting of parole because of records that go missing documentation that can be found so we need to uh, to um, beef up the entire criminal justice system as well of course as the economy and our whole social situation how bad is overcrowding currently in our prisons it is quite bad. Um, well, once again, not the worst in the world. Um, South African prisons are somewhere in the middle between the best in the world in the Netherlands where they close down uh, prisons or Norway and then some of the horrible examples we sometimes hear of uh, elsewhere in the world. But uh, prisons on ever average are 150 percent full. Um, uh, this uh, even after this remission, according to my calculations, there will still be about 40,000 people too many in prisons, more over the capacity. We have about 160,000, 163,000 people in prisons. Many of them have not been sentenced yet. They are waiting for their trial. Their trial date keeps being postponed, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the overcrowding leads to many other problems, gangsterism, violence, meals that cannot be served on time, facilities that uh, are run down because the burden cannot be carried, and extreme stress for the officials who go on sick leave and avoid sometimes their duties and go for, have to go for trauma counseling, etc. You know, one of the, the big concerns, and we had spoken to it in the introduction to the interview, was that you find that some of these prisoners that uh, are parolees unfortunately commit the crimes again and come back into the system. What is your experience? I mean, how, how often does that occur? Yeah, I do not have specific statistics with me. Um, uh, when I was in a consultation with the National Commissioner and the Minister, I did mention this, they are well aware of it, I cannot give you specifics, yeah, yeah. but of course the problem of repeat offenders or recidivism is also a much wider and general one. Even people who serve their sentences, who are so supposed to be rehabilitated, a significant percentage of them um, end up 
back behind bars. And some of these are tragic stories. It is not only a question of people being inherently evil. Um, uh, we have had situations where a young woman, for example, in the Western Cape, um, who is incarcerated f not for a very serious offence but for something like theft, then gets parole, spends a week or two outside and then specifically commits a crime in order to get back and according to her grandmother when they came to fetch her she said I'm going home and her explanation to us was because the world out there is just full of violence and drugs family members use women especially to commit crimes they use them for prostitution etc so the recidivism is a problem which does not uh, strictly speaking fall under our under the mandate of jigs but organizations like Nicro, etc are working on it so i do not have the statistics but i think it can be expected that over time quite a number of the people released will unfortunately be back. You know, uh, reading uh, quite, a, quite a, a nice article on the, uh, the Sowetan Live website, and they go quite into depth about the different statistics and how it looked and when remission was granted previously. So just I in one statistic they quote here, they're saying in previous remissions in 2005, 0.24% um, of prisoners uh, found, them found themselves back in prison. Um, in 2012, 0.25%. 0.25%, less than 1% of the re, re, uh, remitted individuals re-offended. So it's not necessarily a very high statistic from past experience. Yes, I do not necessarily um, mention it because of the uh, statistical impact, um, but within the broader concept as to why release people who are supposed to serve their sentences, etc., um, that is a factor. Of course, prisons will also fill up over time in any event. Uh, but to get back to the beginning, we at JIX and I personally do welcome this initiative. Mm, mm. I understand concerns about um, criminals on the street, etc. But we must remember also that this does not apply to the most hardened uh, offenders who committed very serious crimes like murder and rape and uh, crimes against women and children, etc. By the way, short sentences generally uh, also contribute significantly to overcrowding. And that's why we say courts have to consider alternatives, not an alternative to a life sentence for a serial rapist or killer. There we have nothing else uh, that we can do, but uh, alternatives for short sentences. When somebody spends a week, uh, a few weeks, even a few months in prison, instead of doing correctional, uh, being under correctional supervision, etc., um, the main thing that happens is that person is uh, re could be recruited into a gang, uh, gets the tattoos of the gang on his arms. Uh, cannot find employment afterwards. So unlike Europe, for example, where they argue that courts must give shorter sentences instead of very harsh sentences, uh, in South Africa we would say that give the harsh sentences where they are due and try to avoid short sentences that achieve very little in terms of rehabilitation and, and uh, rather um, contribute to drawing people deeper into crime. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting to see that the last time that we did any of these remission of sentences, uh, or the president did that, was in 2012 under uh, uh, former president Jacob Zuma. Now we're in 2019. W what goes into this? Why does it take so long? Uh, why does it take did it take so long to think about remission again? Well, certainly while they, you know, while uh, uh, if a president uh, uh, does it more on, on, a, on a more regular basis, uh, why is it so long yeah. between the, the remissions? I, I cannot say. These decisions were are taken, uh, initiated by the Justice Ministry. Uh, if I understand the situation correctly, the Justice Minister came forward with a proposal, Cabinet discussed it, etc. Um, so, it, to a large extent, it is a political decision. Mm. And I think what happened here, the political decision was taken and then consultations took place with stakeholders, of which we are um, just one. Uh, but why it has not been considered in the meantime, I cannot say. Uh, many people are opposed to the very concept. You've heard uh, politicians and others saying that it 
negates and um, ignores the very hard work done by police and prosecutors. Um, uh, that may be so, but of course we also have to take into account the very difficult task of an understaffed Department of Correctional Services whose officials are also prone to uh, crack under pressure, commit crimes themselves, get involved in drugs and other peddling, etc., partly because of the overcrowding. Yeah. Just um, what about talking to the victims of crime and perhaps those that have been directly implicated in this? Do they form any part of the negotiations? Uh, I am not aware of the fact, or I don't know whether in this case they were consulted. Of course, yeah. in individual cases, there are many programs to try to bring victims and, um, and the perpetrators of crime together. Um, there are um, a lot of initiatives worldwide and also in South Africa. Um, uh, but when you talk about so many thousands of people, like in this case, I assume it would be practically difficult uh, to consult with the victims um, on a one by on one basis, uh, I, I cannot speak for the ministry as to why they did not do it or whether they did do it. Okay, just finally, um, um, uh, Justice. I, I know I've got a wrap, so it's very quickly. How long does this process take? Well, it seems to me that it could take quite long. Um, it is not a question that everybody will be home uh, at Christmas. Um, many processes have to go through, paperwork have to be done, and that is why our organization said that we could assist because um, one does not want a whole wave of new complaints of people who think that they were promised remission and they still have not received it, they're still in prison, etc. That is what we are dealing with all the time with regard to parole. So I think it could take several months, um, but I am not sure about the specific timelines set out in the detail that the minister made available. I right. think when we talk about a Christmas present, it's more the message the announcement than the actual release that is the Christmas present. Thanks for joining us, Justice. Justice Johan van der Westhuizen, inspecting judge at the Judicial Inspectorate for Correctional Services, reacting to the remission of sentences announced by the President on Monday. Quick break. See you with the bathroom.